What's up guys, it's Mark from Silenced Tech. Finally, it's time to take a closer look at the X299 Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard from MSI. And a massive shout out to them for providing the i5-7640K for testing. I will also be sharing my thoughts on KB Lake X a little later in the video. For now, let's check out the board's specs and features. The Gaming Pro Carbon is priced at $349.99 in the US and £299 in the UK. That's the second most expensive X299 motherboard MSI has in its lineup. Only the gaming M7 ACK trumps it and that's until we see the infamous X299 godlike carbon and I cannot wait to get my hands on one of them. Skylake X will give you every feature X299 has to offer, including quad channel support and more PCIe Express lanes up to 44, which will be needed if you want to build a system with multiple graphics cards and storage drives, although it should be noted anything but the 7900X right now won't provide anything more than 28 PCIe Express lanes, so unless you're willing to spend over $1000 on a 7900X you won't be able to run multiple graphics cards and storage drives in x16 x16 mode. Instead, you'll be limited to x16 x8, and that's extremely disappointing from Intel. Owners of the 5930K and 6850K running multiple graphics cards wanting to upgrade to X299 are going to have to spend a lot of money. Both the 5930K and 6850K have 40 PCIe Express lanes so if you own one I would stay put for now and wait to see what AMD have to offer with Fred Ripper. That leads me on to KB Lake X. There's two CPUs in this lineup, the i7-7740X and the CPU I have here for testing, the i5-7640X. Pairing these with an X299 motherboard means features are severely limited. Honestly, I can't actually get my head around why this has even happened. Both the 7740X and the 7640X are quad-core processors, only providing dual-channel memory support. Both processors also only have 16 PCIe Express lanes leaving you with very limited options for adding drives and additional graphics cards. Let me know down in the comments section what your thoughts are on KB Lake X even being released on the X299 platform. Anyway with that huge rant out of the way it's time to now jump back into the motherboard and take a closer look at the Gaming Pro Carbon. Firstly the rear I.O. From left to right there's a flashback button, a clear CMOS button, a PS2 keyboard and mouse port, three USB 2.0 type A ports, five USB 3.1 ports and another type C, two Wi-Fi antennas which you do get the aerials in the box, you get one LAN RJ45 port and lastly 5 OFC audio jacks including a SPDIF out connector. For system memory, the board supports speeds of up to 4,333 MHz of DDR4, and it can run in either dual channel or quad channel depending on your configuration and processor, and the board has a maximum capacity of 128GB. Onto the four PCIe Express slots, you'll be able to run multiple graphics cards in Crossfire or SLI. If you pair this board with the previously mentioned i9-7900X, the top PCIe PCIe slot will run at times 16, the second slot will run at times 4, the third slot times 16 again, and the last slot times 8. There are two M.2 SSD slots on the Gaming Pro Carbon with awesome thermal padding M.2 shields. The top 8cm slot supports M.2 types 2242, 2260 and 2280 and the bottom larger 10cm slot supports types 2260, 2280 and 2210. Also you'll be able to raid both of these M.2s giving you blistering loading time. Times. Other storage options include 8 SATA free 6 gigabit per second ports, 6 facing away from the board and 2 facing outwards. 
Looking at the bottom, there's some neat features besides the usual front panel connectors. Firstly, you'll be able to dial up and overclock with this handy little dial, although I recommend using the BIOS. Just slightly across is two tiny little buttons, giving you the option to power it on the board or reset it. Far better than having to jump the motherboard yourself. Also, the motherboard has its own RGB LED headers that will sync with MSI's Mystic Light. Moving on to the audio, the Gaming Pro uses Realtek ALC1220 that offers 7.1 channel high definition audio which pairs up with the Nehemic software. Overall the sound quality of this motherboard is extremely good, onboard audio has improved so much over the years. The X299 Gaming Pro Carbon can also be fully customised, all the shielding has removable 3D parts, in fact a spare set comes in the box, in gold and silver. While you may not like these colours, painting them would be very easy, and you can even go as far as getting your own stickers made up. An example of this was sent to me from MSI in this awesome wooden box with my channel name stamped on it. Jumping into the UEFI BIOS, MSI's Click BIOS 5 interface has always been very well laid out and easy to navigate. Nothing has really changed though on the X299 platform, and why would they? Giving a quick overview in advanced mode, in the top left corner is Game Boost. It acts the same as the dial on the bottom of the motherboard I mentioned earlier. There's various levels from 1 to 10. Each step increases the CPU core and voltage. I would personally be very careful using this dial if you don't know anything about overclocking as you will still need to check the voltages and temperatures. Slightly over to the right of Game Boost is a button that enables XMP. Both can't be enabled at the same time. XMP will overclock your DDR4 memory by upping its frequencies and altering the timings. The last upper box gives you various information on your specs and a way to change your boot priority. Very handy if you're having trouble getting your motherboard to boot Windows from a particular drive. The three boxes on the far left is where you'll spend most of your time. The first one is for various settings, the second one is for dialing in a manual overclock, and the last box is what you'll use to update or reflash the motherboard's BIOS. Lastly, you can monitor the system fans connected to this motherboard by clicking the hardware monitor tab. Personally, I use a separate fan controller, so I have never ever used it. Anyway, that's all the features and specs wrapped up. It's time to see how far this board can overclock a 7640X. Running the latest BIOS, the Gaming Pro AC managed to get the 7640X up to 5.1 GHz at 1.3 volts, and temperatures never reached any higher than 74 degrees Celsius. No matter what I say about Intel's choice to add a 4 core processor to an enthusiast platform, MSI have done their job well. The motherboard allowed me to achieve a massive overclock, and not once did I have any issues with the Gaming Pro while overclocking, although please note this doesn't reflect how well the board will overclock Skylake X. Lastly, before I round off, let's take a look at the LED features of this motherboard. Using MSI's Mystic Light app, you can choose various effects and colours that really set this board off. Plus, the motherboard will be able to sync up with other Mystic Light certified products as well. Case fans, LED strips, graphics cards and also memory. So that about wraps up my review on the X299 Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard from MSI. It was a bit of a long one today, but well worth taking an in-depth look at X299, even if it was with a gimped CPU. MSI have made a stunning motherboard that has the performance and features to back up its looks. Paired with an i9-7900X, this motherboard I'm predicting will deliver some serious next generation performance. The overall award for MSI's Gaming Pro Carbon X299 motherboard is Platinum. MSI have done everything right in my opinion, but now all I'm waiting for is the X299 version of the Godlike Carbon, and I've got my fingers crossed I'll be able to review that and maybe use it for a build. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this review. My name's Mark from Silence Tech. Goodbye.